Friday, September 20th here on the Just Baseball Show. You got Jack McMullen, I am Peter Apple, and Jack, are you ready to harmonize? Because you know what day it is. As ready as I'll ever be. Do you want to go high or low? I go high typically, right? Okay, that's fine. I've I've shown to go high occasionally. What do you want to do, Petey? I'll go low. What do you want to do, Petey? I'll go low. And I was going to say I like my falsetto, but I have no idea if that means high or low. Uh, I've just heard that word high. said. That's yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. You know, it's not falsetto. It's one word, falsetto. Falsetto. That's what I said. I said it yeah. right. I just had no idea what the definition was. It's no different. doubt. I'm going to, I'm going to achieve the falsetto here. All right. Three, two, one. Mailbag. Yeah. Welcome to the mailbag, everybody. Thank you for asking your questions on our Instagram and on our Twitter at just BB underscore media for Twitter at just baseball show for Instagram. You guys left us tons of questions and this is the last mailbag of the regular season because we only have about nine or 10 games left. We'll probably do a mailbag in the middle of the playoffs. Probably a lot of playoff questions. We might not though. This could be the last mailbag and that's why I'm upset at fraud. I'm late freaking for all those people are watching on YouTube, going to a baseball game, working, scouting. What a loser. He should be here answering all these questions. Yeah, no, and he didn't get there in time to watch Shohei Otani throw his bullpen in Miami. So, did you see that video of Otani throwing a pitch and then Will Ireton, who's his translator now and has worked for the Dodgers for a little bit, holding an iPad, looking at the iPad, smiling, then turning it. I don't think it was Mark Pryor, the pitching coach. I think it was like support. Turning it to him, he smiled, and then he said, no, you can't see it. What that told me is like that was that was ninety nine at twenty four fifty, and yeah. like he's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't already know, Shohei Otani can also pitch, and there are reports that he could potentially be ready for the playoffs. But I just don't know. I don't know. But I don't want it to happen because I want him to throw one hundred and seventy innings. Here's year. the thing, though: Tyler Glass now likely not to pitch in the playoffs. Gavin Stone likely not to pitch in the playoffs. Yamamoto right now is going four or five innings. Bueller's an Oklahoma City baseball club member. I can't say he's an OKC Dodger, but like, or no, sorry, Bobby Miller is. Yeah, Bobby Miller. Yeah, Bueller's there. Sorry, yeah. Bobby Miller is an Oklahoma City baseball club member. So maybe they could use him. I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see. But it's time to get into the questions again. Thank you uh, for everybody asking them. And before we get into the questions, just another reminder that this show is brought to you by BetMGM the king of sports books. Remember folks, download BetMGM, whether it be on iOS or Android and use promo code just baseball. When you deposit at least $10, your first wager, if it were to lose, you'll get it all back in bonus up to 1500 buckaroons. And if you win, congratulations, you want to bet. So remember, use promo code just baseball on BetMGM. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 or older. Terms and conditions apply. One more thing before we get into the mailbag. Speaking of that Marlins Dodgers game, did you see the PJ Morlando thing? So <laughs> I was so okay. Yes, I did. And I didn't even know if like we really should talk about it because it's no, we should talk about it because it's kind of idiotic. <laughs> but I did say so. I have been using the term what a shame for the Miami Marlins what I post because the biggest bet of my entire life was fading their entire franchise. Right, right. So, but then I kind of let that go to the side because Miami Marlins fans were very unhappy with that. And I, I didn't want to pile on. They knew that they weren't having a good season. The wind total was on its way. So I was like, all right, I almost did want to shame to that, but I did it. And then I almost tweeted, I'm not going to tweet what a shame to this. And then I just decided I'm not going to yeah, talk just about it. So it. Miami Marlins fans already hate me. Why don't you tell us the story? So Isaac is out who does phenomenal, phenomenal stuff um, for fish on first also freelances for the Miami Herald put out this report per multiple sources. Marlins first round pick PJ Morlando suffered his season ending injury in a weightlifting competition. Team officials organized the competition during a rain delay on August 2nd, Morlando's first professional game. The first professional game part really jumped out to me. It's like, hey, time to deadlift as much as you possibly can because it started raining outside. 
and I highly recommend Marlins fans are going to hate this fans of other teams who think that this whole situation is hilarious. Maybe that's me. Maybe it's not. I'm not at Liberty to say I plead the fifth. Not hilarious. It sucks for PJ. Yeah, Moreland. It sucks. I mean, no, it's not hilarious. You're right. It's not. The what is hilarious. What yeah. is hilarious. Go, if you could go back to our YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube right now on our YouTube, the MLB draft live stream, skip ahead to when the Marlins picked PJ Morlando, I think it was 14th overall arms yeah. reaction to that draft pick. And just over the years, arms reaction to Jacob Barry or any of these guys that the Marlins have been drafting. Just go watch his reaction. It's the fun. It's almost as funny as the PJ Morlando situation. I, don't, I just don't think it's funny, dude. I think it's really sad for PJ Morlando. It sucks that he was put in that position. Like, but who, yeah, who but in the right mind thinks rain field. delay? Rain delay is the time to put your feet up and do nothing. And they're like, you know what? Time to lift as much as we possibly can. You ready? Lifting composite competition post a full season, and then in the middle of the season, because wasn't he drafted? He played a full year, then goes straight to minor leagues, and then plays even more games. Is that correct? Yeah, he was a high school draftee. Yeah. I want to say he was dealing with some injury this year, but if he played the whole year, like it's not it's not a massive workload for PJ Morlando. He should have felt somewhat fresh because the high school season is very short. Um, but it was early August and it's like, you know what? Dog days of summer, time to lift as much as you possibly can. But what are you doing having a lifting competition in the middle of a season? Regardless? Exactly. Exactly. That's why Whatever. All right. I, let's... I also think real quick, like I also think professional baseball players do not need to be in lifting competitions. I don't think it serves a purpose for really any sport. It's fun to see Derek Henry and Jalen Hurts squat 500 pounds, but like, I don't see the purpose in having, you know, dynamic, flexible professional athletes in baseball, in basketball, in soccer, anything like that. It's like, Hey, move as much weight as you can for one rep. And that's why I did chuckle at the story Yeah, because enough. of what you just said. All right, let's get into question number one of the mailbag. Again, thank you, everybody, for asking these questions. And we'll start with one from JMO DeGoat on X. Who are some of the players having rough years that you think will bounce back next year? I have four answers, and I think there's a lot of different answers. Yeah. So we can flip-flop, keep going back and forth, Um some of the guys I think are pretty obvious, some not so much. Do you have one obvious one off off the top? Um, I don't know if this guy is obvious, but Adolis Garcia. Yeah. Like is he obvious? Somewhat. Do you think but, that maybe he's his prime is ending a little bit? Like do you do you foresee a big bounce back next year? He's just a huge human being. And I'm wondering like where the defense went because he went from a really good right field defender to a very average or slightly below average right field defender. And I'm like, wait, what, what happened there? Are the offensive struggles bleeding into that? I don't think he's an 80 WRC plus guy or like an 85 WRC plus guy. Like he is right now. Um, I think he's strong as shit. I know he's going to punch out, but he's actually king less this year than he was last year. There's just nothing about his game that I'm like, yeah, you know what? Regression makes a ton of sense right here. Yeah, this this one's a weird one. I'm surprised that you brought him up first because Adolis Garcia makes his money off hitting the shit out of the baseball, right? That's what he does. It's living crap out of it. You're playing about really good corner outfield defense. But the thing is, like, his hard hit rate is still very high. Some of the, like... This is a very blue savant page. Like, I haven't really dove into Adolis Garcia lately, so I'll just take your word for it. But I don't know. When I watch him take at bats, it doesn't look good either. But again, bounce back time. So I'll go with one that I think is is pretty obvious. So I think when we're talking about um, Bo Bichette, when it comes to the mm -hmm. Hall of Fame discussion in 20 <laughs> years, we're going to think to ourselves, remember in 2024 where he was in trade discussions, he was injured and – for whatever reason, the bat just didn't come to play this year. I think Boba Shett's going to bounce back massively next year. He has the sixth biggest discrepancy between his Woba and his ex-Woba, which is identifying his quality of contact. So the quality of contact has been perfectly fine with him. And I saw a tweet from Johnny Junta, who does the Gate 14 podcast, who I love. I think he's hilarious. Yeah. He tweeted out, like, we're all going to collectively forget about Bo Bichette's 2024 season, pretend it never happened. I'm on the same wavelength with him. 
I think this is going to be one of those weird years and he's going to go right back to hitting like 310, 320 with a four win season. I think for the rest of his career, he's too damn talented with the bat to not. And he's still really young, right? It's not like Adolis Garcia, a terrible answer to start us off. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but again, Adolis is 31 compared to Bichette, who's I think 26 years old. How, how old is Bichette? Bichette yeah. is, yeah, 26 years old. I got it. 26. Yeah. Um, no, I, I know my answer sucked in comparison to the guy that is going to be a Hall of Famer, according to Peter Apple, which is yeah. great. So, yeah, it, Actually, it totally feeds in something. Analyze something like me yeah. saying Boba Shett's going to be a Hall of Famer. No, it, it feeds into the <laughs> February narrative that you cultivated for Boba Shett, which is great. And like next year on the top 100, Bichette's going to be in the 50s. And we're like, oh, Peter. Yeah, Peter. It's like, no, he, should, he shouldn't then, be there. And then it's going to be the same thing. Peter, how can you say that he's at 42 yeah. after last year? And I'm right, going to be like, I believe. Yeah. But, but, but Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but look at Isak Paredes. <laughs> um, my next one, I, I've got two players that I, th- I think are very similar, and the bat has not been as good <laughs> as it was. Andres Jimenez. Yeah. If this guy hits, all of a sudden he's a four and a half, five win player. And I, I think he can do that again. Like, remember, he earned an $100 million contract. And now it's like, oh, yeah, you know, he's a one and a half, two win player because he's an elite defender at second base. But like I, I kind of want him to be the two hitter for Cleveland. Now he looks like the seven hitter for Cleveland. Uh, Bryson Stott, I think, is carbon copy of that conversation. Mm. Like, where did the where did the top flight defense go? And if you hit, you're gonna defend. It's all gonna work. So Stott and Jimenez fall into the same bucket for me. Yeah, both of them just do not hit the ball hard at all. And even Andres Jimenez too. Like in that year where he put up a 140 WRC plus, he didn't hit the ball all that hard either. 37% hard hit rate, which is pretty good. Not great. That's like fine. The past two years have been 27, 28%. He's in like the third percentile. Dude just does not put bat on ball and have it go out at even a decent exit velocity. Bryson Stott, I feel like is kind of the same thing. Had an Andres Jimenez type year where he just stopped hitting the ball hard. I don't think that these guys just forgot how to do that so i totally agree with those two absolutely i don't get it i really don't get it um last hitter for me michael harris has had a weird year injury injury right but even when he's been healthy he's not having that good of a year and the reason i identified him is not just because i bet on his over hits but this is a guy in 2022 853 ops 2023 or 2022, excuse me, that was 853. 2023, 808 OPS. This year, 672? Hitting 246, slugging 386? That's not the Michael Harris we know. And I could say, well, Jack, yeah, he's been injured, so that's the reason. He's been injured a lot of his career so far, whether it be two-week spurts, whether it be a little bit longer. So I'm not going to put it all on that. But this guy, again, hits the ball too hard, doesn't strike out much. He doesn't walk, but he makes too good a contact, and he's too fast to have stats like that. And he also has the fifth biggest discrepancy between his Woba and his ex-Woba. So my two guys do for big years next year, Harris and Bichette. I've got a Dolis, Andre Simenez, and Bryson Stott. Pitching-wise, I had four names that I'm going to throw at you, and you feel them out. Okay? I only have two, so I'm, I'm ready to listen. Uh, four names, Pablo Lopez in Minnesota. Like he has shown flashes this year of the Pablo that we know is there, but for some reason, the first half Pablo was really bad. And I'm excited to see him kind of recapture that for a full season. Yes. You say Kikuchi now that he's figured it out. Like, yeah, you had it. Didn't you? (laughs) Yeah. Just like, no, no, I didn't have you say Kikuchi. Oh, you didn't have it. But I, 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 for what you're doing is you're building on great second halves in the next year. And like, I agree with you. I just took guys who have had kind of bad years in general and so, really haven't shown us that they could have great years next year. So my two guys that follow that are young guys, Brandon yeah. fought in Arizona. I, I had Brandon fought makes no sense Four eight one ERA. I refuse yeah. to believe that to be the case is three, eight, one expected ERA backs it up. Brandon fought's too good of a pitcher to have a four, eight. The other one that's really starting to hurt my mind is Mackenzie Gore in Washington. Yeah. Can't get out lefties. What the hell is that? He's way too good to have an ERA with a four leading it. Way yeah. too good for that. 
just gets into lefties and it's just fastball slider. Arm broke that down when he was ranting about the Marlins and not putting in Griff Codine <laughs> or just not putting in lefties in general against him. And he was totally right. Yeah. It, he really, he has to find a third pitch to get out lefties because you can't be two pitches and leave that slider over the middle. They're going to crush it. But I totally agree with you. He's way too good. Yeah. So you already talked about Brandon fought. I'm not giving up. I don't care if the angels gave up. I'm not giving up on Reed Detmers. I'm not. He's got a three nine one expected ERA. Do you know that? Three yeah. nine one. He's got a six oh five ERA. That's the largest discrepancy for any starting pitcher. Still got a high strikeout where still got a high strikeout rate. Doesn't walk a ton of people. Quality stuff. Left handed pitcher. Very young. I don't care that the Angels gave up on him. I'm not. And then they pulled him back up and he's been a little bit better. Not great. I think this is just kind of a lost season for him which is fine. He'll bounce back next year. Hopefully the angels trade him in the off season. We'll see. Probably not. They'll probably extend him now because the angels have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you were dragged (laughs) through the coals. Now you're financially rewarded. Here's Here's eight years for $95 million. Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of sick, but no. So I'll take Detmers first. Do you still believe? I assume you do. I know you've always been a Detmers guy. I totally still believe in Reed Detmers. Are you kidding? Yeah. Good. That was so unfair. This season has been so unfair to read. So Devin. unfair. It has been. It's been so unfair. Like the life is unfair. No, sometimes it's a little bit more unfair. Sometimes you read Detmers on the Angels. <laughs> read Detmers, Bo Bichette. Unfair. Right? Wouldn't you put Bichette in that conversation? No, I wouldn't. Why not? <laughs> Let's go there. Because. Well, you, you'd never help my narratives. This is stupid. All right. Uh, question number two. It's a casual Friday mailbag. All right. Uh, comes to us on Twitter. X. Don't care. Michael underscore Rokiki. R-O-K-I-C-K-I. Shout out, Michael. Great question. Who would be your second half American League and National League MVP? I got my two answers. I think they're pretty obvious, too. American League. Three, two, one. Check. Bobby Wood Jr. <laughs> wow oh i'm the yankee guy i would give it to bobby in the second half if we're just looking at the second half bobby Wood Jr. 4.5 f4 aaron judge 4.1 now there is a wrc plus discrepancy between like 230 and 195 <laughs> 16 homers eight steals but that 0.4 gap in f4 is enough for me and also the royals resurgence like not quite a resurgence. They've been good all year, but I feel like especially in the second half, he's just been the breadwinner. Aaron Judge has been freaking amazing. Been a better hitter, but when it comes to the totality, I think Bobby Witt has been a little bit better in the second half, and I'd give him the MVP. Judge has gone through the Paw Patrol slump in the second half, exactly. and he still has an 1199 OPS since the All-Star break. Yeah, you don't have to tell me how good Aaron Judge is. I know, but I just... 4.5 to 4.1 is is a decent gap for yeah, a second half. He has a 1,200 OPS. <laughs> like, oh, my God. But Bobby Wood Jr., he, he's slashing 345, 416, 668. So that's close to Judge an 1,100 OPS. Points. Yeah, Judge is still 100 points clear. Yeah. I thought we were going to come to a conclusion on that one. Interesting. I'm taking um, it I, everything you you're just taking the better hitter, and I'm not going to stop you. We can go with Judge. That would make me feel good. No, I'd like that. This is a discussion. I also want to say Vladdy has been amazing, unbelievable, uh, amazing. Yeah, he just um, heard. The other one, leaning into the bat thing, Jordan Alvarez has had a very underappreciated season. Yes, he has. Still, just the say. man. Still, the mountain. I'm going to do the career. I'm going to do the career uh, <laughs> snapshot for Jordan Alvarez here because I think we, we haven't we haven't I done also, it in like two months. No, I think we do it like on September 20th every year. It every feels like the day where it's like, all right, let's check it out. Jordan stats versus everybody in history. Let's see how much better he is, and he always is. Jordan Alvarez in 143 games plays one more, and he matches his career high from 2021. This guy in 143 games is hitting 305 with 34 homers and a 951 OPS. His per 162, and a reminder that Jordan is 27 years old, his per 162, 297, 390, 582, 42 homers, 121 driven in. 
He's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's so good. He's so good. <laughs> he's so good. All right. And he's I'm excited to have this conversation like during the playoffs because we're always prisoners of the moment. Like, oh, because this guy just hit a grand slam in this game. Now he's the best playoff performer. But there's a short list of guys you do not want to face in the postseason. Jordan has an argument for number one. Harper and Jordan are right there. I still think I'd be more afraid to face Jordan than Harper. I still would. I That's absolutely up for discussion. But I, I think Harper and Jordan are one, two right there. Yeah. I mean, like, you don't want to face Juan Soto in the playoffs either. No, you don't. Yeah. It's crazy. We were looking at, uh, when we were talking about quality of contact differences of the guys that I mentioned, Juan Soto, Juan Soto and Shohei Otani have been unlucky according to that this year. Good. Yeah. Judge nice. too. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Judge has been unlucky. That's they, the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I know, but that's what the numbers say that they should be having more success than they are. That's yeah. how good of hitters they are. Crazy. Um, National League, we should one, two, three in the same one, right? Okay. One, two, three, Lindor. Lindor. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lindor 303 with a 928 OPS, 14 homers. He's nine for 10 in the stolen base department, but you're going to fill in the war number. And my thing is like, he has kept the Mets in this postseason conversation. Like the Mets are in the wild card because of what Francisco Lindor has done in the second half. You just basically said that Bobby Wood Jr. should win it over Aaron Judge. Yeah. All right. That's basically well, what you said. Yeah. So <laughs> no. Bobby Wood Jr. Let's do the three, <laughs> three, two, one. Bobby, Bobby Wood Jr. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> I, again, I would totally take Lindor 3.4 F4 third in baseball in the second half, just trailing Bobby Wood Jr. and Aaron Judge, first in the National League. Everything you said, no doubt about it. That's all we got. I have a couple other names that do not contest Lindor, but Jackson Chorio, man, 312 mm. with 32 extra base hits in 53 games. He's got a 961 OPS over his last 53 games since the All-Star break. Mm. Also important to mention that Shohei Otani has 19 homers and is 26 for 27 in the stolen base department in his last 55 games. Are you kidding me? Um, and then, dude, could tell Marte, I know, has been hurt. I know. But Corbin Carroll and Eugenio Suarez has been have been two of the better hitters in the National League since the All-Star break. Gino is raking. Gino's raking. Raking. I mean, he's right back to those days where you'd pull up the home run totals. Remember, I think it was a few years ago. We'd be 49 like, 49 homers, 48, 49. I know. It's like, who has the most homers from 2020 to 2022 or something? And it was like. Oh. A. Eugenio Suarez, Aaron Judge, Peter Laws. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is he doing up there? But that's the kind of hitter he could be. Right. So shout out Gino, shout out Corbin Carroll. Um, move on to question number three. Yep. Wait, but before we do, aren't isn't everybody glad that I reminded many, many times, and I was probably the first to figure this out, that Shohei is fast? It do like victory lapping the Shohei Otani stolen base thing is crazy today. I have to. <laughs> sometimes you have to on september 20th I have too many right? bad takes i gotta get some good ones in there <laughs> all right uh question number three this comes to us from d underscore rawlings on twitter which team would be the world series favorite if this series was just one game win or go home i love this question i came up with my top five because this question fired me up it was like who would i take win or go home so can i ask yeah. Can you throw your ace every single time? No, like in this, yes. I think that's yeah. how I decided it. It would be win or go home. This is, we're basically figuring out who would you want pitcher and team game seven. Yeah. That's how I kind of thought about it. Like yeah. one game to win it all. Who My thing is want? like, okay, you play the DS on a Saturday and then you play the CS the following Saturday. Like you get five, six days rest in between. Yes. So you can just send your ace full go team yes. to the mound every time. That's how I did it. And I have my number one pick. I, we might have the same one. This is not a draft, but this is who I need. Game seven in the bank with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Good luck. Number one postseason pitcher. I know Chris Sale's been the best pitcher in baseball this year. I know Tarek Skubal has been the second best pitcher in baseball this year. But the third best pitcher in baseball this year is Zach Wheeler. And Zach Wheeler has shown time and time again 
that crowd in that stadium with that guy on the mound, good luck. That's my that's winner winner go home with them. That was so far and away the right answer. Yeah. Like but I don't no think that's gonna be everybody's answer. Why would you not pick the Braves with Chris Sale? Why would you not pick the Tigers with Terry the Phillies offense is the Phillies exactly. offense. Exactly. If you're a prisoner of the moment. I think a lot of people might not just go straight to Wheeler, but I would. And I know yeah. you would. No, I go straight to Wheeler when you have Harper and Schwarber and Trey Turner and like all these guys hanging out in that lineup as well. And then you get that rested back end, like the middle ain't great, but then you get the rested, like, no, no, no. like Hoffman, Wheeler goes six. Yeah, Wheeler goes yeah. six, and then you hand it off to some assortment of Kirkering, Estevez, Strom, yeah, Hoffman. I'll I mean, dude, like, choice. dealer's choice, whatever. Um, the only other team that I think held a candle to that is Houston with Fromber on the mound. I don't think so. I think there's another team in the American League I'd take over it. Okay. I would take Cole and the Yankees. And I think, and I am a, I am like enemy number one in doing this. The Yankees are the best team in the American League. They are. They're the best team in the American League. They are. Like the Astros are more proven in the playoffs, 100%. Yeah. But Garrett Cole coming into this year was the best pitcher alive. And then behind him, you have Judge and Soto in that lineup with guys who are also contributing right now. And then if you get to the good part of the Yankees bullpen, where they can go Luke Weaver and they can go Tommy Canely and Jay Cousins and Clay Holmes, I would take them over Framber and the Astros. I know Framber is pitching out of his mind right now. I know you still have the Astros, but I'm taking Garrett Cole and the Yankees. And I don't even think that's biased. I'm taking the number one pitcher coming into the year yeah. who has looked better lately. I know he did this and gave up seven. I know I watched it and we bitched about it on the show multiple times, but still. Cole and the Yankees, I would take. Yeah, I, I'll disagree because Fromber is in better form. And I think that like I'm not I'm not saying Jordan and Judge cancel each other out because I know who like the better hitter is. It's Aaron Judge. There's no doubt about that. Um, I know that Soto is better than anybody else that Houston has. Um, but like there's something about my sticking point there is the bullpen, to be totally honest with you, where, you know, I see Hater ticking up and I see Abreu ticking up and things like that. I, I do feel better about the team that's been there and done it and Fromber pitching the way he is as opposed to Cole. There might be a team I'd take over both of them in the NL. I think Sale with that bullpen. Like, I, I don't hit. know how many teams are winning that game. Chris they, Sale is a World Series under his belt. Like, the way he's pitching right now and the way the first four hitters in the lineup for Atlanta are hitting right now, Matt Olson's been on a tear lately. Marcelo Zuna is still doing his thing. Jorge Soler's been good, and so has Michael Harris lately. So if they're hitting enough, like, against the Braves, there's been a reason why they are, for sports betters, the ultimate under team. Because they haven't been able to hit all year. They've been worse than the Mariners offensively, but their pitching is so elite. So I get the best pitcher in baseball this year with a top two, three bullpen and enough hitters where one swing might be all of that it takes. And also playing in Atlanta ain't easy in the playoffs either. I I think they're right up there with Cole and, and Framber. I disagree because I don't think that lineup, you know, is is where the Yankees and, and the Astros lineup That's is fair. At, at the point. But I just um, think Sale is that. And that is, bullpen. Yeah. I think that bullpen is better than Astros or Yankees. Yeah, I, I do think that the Astros, like their top flight bullpen talent could just lock it down. Pretty worried but, about I'm still worried about Presley. Yeah, yeah. I, Presley looks older now. Like but Presley all guys. of a sudden looks 35. Um yeah, I just think nobody comes even close to Philly with Wheeler on the map. I agree. Um that would be my yeah, definitely. I also think that the Tigers. I mean, you have Scooble and that bullpen who has yeah. been the best bullpen outside of the Guardians in the second half. Or maybe yeah. they've been better than the Guardians. they got to go back to the exact ERA. I think we've cited it on this show. But regardless, I know they're elite. The offense is just what keeps it out. But they've been hitting like crazy, and they're on this amazing run, and it's been so enjoyable to watch. So for all those reasons, like I would not want to face Scooble with that bullpen right now. I mean, you just went into Kansas City and dominated. Not dominated, but pitched really well, and they won 4-1. to one. Against the Royals at home, where we know how good their offense is. Right. I, there's not a lot of teams that could beat Scooble in a in a 
in Comerica right now. I don't think very, very few, very few. Anybody else, or should we just move on? I don't think so. Like it, Philly and Houston, and then I New York crossed my mind. But aside from that, there really wasn't much. But it's just Philly, and then everybody else. I know we're gonna keep this thing moving, but. I do want to tell you about our friends at Game Time real quick. It's Game all time. about live events. We know that some of the best memories are made at marquee sporting events. And now Game Time can help you out with their new feature called Game Time Picks. That makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even faster and easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. It's a simple process. Open up an event, you see three tiers of deals fed to me off the top. You see super deals, amazing deals, and great deals. I typically go all, all in on the super deal. The amazing deal is also amazing because that's the name of the deal. You have the opportunity to essentially curate your deal to fit your priorities on Game Time Picks. So go check out Game Time Picks. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, list goes on. You get panoramic seat views before checkout. You get their lowest price guarantee, which means if you find a better deal in the same section and row elsewhere, Game Time credits you 110% of the difference. And Game Time covers your purchases with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Just Baseball for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. And redeem code J U S T B A S E B A L L. That was your slowest one yet. For $20 <laughs> off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. There we go. Quick, bag. quick point, then quick story. Quick point, then quick story. Quick point is make sure to put promo code just baseball in the profile section, yep. right? It's not one of those things where you go with the end, you check out, then you put in the promo code. Once you download, put in that in your profile section. Quick story number two. Remember I said that I bought concert tickets on game time yeah, and I didn't want to blow it? I did. It's October 16th, which might get in the way of some playoff baseball, but it's my girlfriend's birthday, Billie Eilish in Madison wow. Square Garden. Wow. It's going to be a blast. I'm not a huge Billie Eilish person, but she wow. is. And who That's knows? It. Maybe I really like some Billie Eilish. I don't know. That's a massive L on your end. She is generational. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't listen to a lot of music that much anymore i used to i just watch baseball docs did you listen to the intro football. of yesterday's show no i didn't okay <laughs> we talked about it was like oh you know you, the mandatory non-baseball conversation for like two minutes before you get into baseball and we talked about how your like escape from baseball is watching like baseball history documentaries yeah. or football <laughs> <laughs> like i mean yeah. it's 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 the nfl it's it's or baseball docs i love a good baseball doc but um, the reason I'm bringing up the Billie Eilish concert is I was about to check out on game time. And then I was like, I'm just going to see the other ticketing, you know, companies, see what they're at. Every single other one was a hundred dollars more. Yeah, Every single one. So it was like unbelievable. The deals that you can get on game time. That's the reason I brought it up. And genuinely like that happened. That's a, that's a bona fide fact. I checked out on game time, checked other places way more, got it on game time. Nice. All right. Let's go into question number four. This is going to be for you because I don't really know. I mean, I can guess off the top of my head, but let's go. What are the top five minor league organizations based on development and player hospitality? This was asked by Klein Schroeder on X. Shout out to Klein Schroeder. Yeah. Always asking good questions in the Always. mailbag. And we got another one from him. Jack, what would you say your top five is? It's it's tough. I don't know enough about player hospitality. I know that there are you know organizations that treat guys the right way, and I think that there are a lot of those organizations actually, especially with new guardrails put in place and with minor league baseball now having a seat at the table when it comes to the players association and and all of that. Um, like I, there are a lot of organizations in terms of hospitality where it's like, yeah, we treat them well. Like these Indianapolis players are at a very nice complex in, in Indianapolis, so. You know, that that's great. And like, hey, the Pirates treat them well. There are a ton of other organizations that treat them well. But it, it's clear that like there are, I think, six organizations that are a step above when it comes to player development once they get guys in. And you see that they turn into an absolute factory. I think Seattle does a really nice job with scouting. And I think a lot of these guys are 
already like you see what's going on there and then they you know blossom on their own right but when it comes to development tampa obviously cleveland especially pitching wise i think cleveland is turned into a factory in that regard i think milwaukee has done a hell of a job especially recently and oh, yeah. matt arnold took over for david stearns and it has been a seamless transition Houston does a hell of a job. And Houston was one of the first movers on the tech. And that was pre-COVID. Um, Houston is very strong. And I know that they don't necessarily have the prospects to show for it. But they were doing a really nice job of maximizing their prospects before other teams were. The last two should be very easy. The Yankees and the Dodgers. The Dodgers are the class of this. And and we heard Walker Bueller say that, I mean, they were eating organic before any other organization of minor league baseball was. Like they were only eating organic at like low A. You know how expensive that is? Yeah. That is a cost. And they're willing to do it because they prioritize that. The Dodgers punch at a different weight class. I think the Yankees are pretty damn close to that as well, especially pitching wise. Like they... They have this weird pitcher whisper thing going on there where it's like yeah. they shut a guy down after they get drafted and then all of a sudden they come back and they're amazing. Um, I think those two are clear cut. Tampa is there. Cleveland is there. Houston is there. And uh, Milwaukee is there as well. Love it. Great list. Is there anybody yeah. like on the outside looking in, maybe a team that you've seen done really well like lately, right? They don't have the track record of these yeah. teams that you mentioned, but just, oh, they're going in the right direction. I like that. I, I think identification and development wise, um, the Marlins are getting the most out of their pitchers. As crazy as that sounds, I think they the are. Marlins are doing a really good job. They have yeah. great pitching. I think the Pirates are doing a really good job with their pitchers. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, dude, ske Look schemes Bubba. you couldn't schemes you couldn't mess up, but like Bubba, yeah. Thomas Harrington, J Jared Jones was yeah, a 2020 Jared. draftee out of yeah. high school. Jared Jones was not like a top flight prospect, if I'm if he I was remember. A second correctly. rounder out of high yeah. school. Um, Braxton Ashcraft has leveled up. I know some consider him a, a top 100 prospect in baseball. Um, Hunter Barco has come back from Tommy John and looked like a hell of a prospect. And they traded Patrick Riley, who I thought was awesome, to Baltimore for Billy Cook. Baltimore is also an, an easy one to identify. Um, but I think that they do a great job scouting. And like these guys, we knew Adley had the chance to be Adley. We knew that Grayson Rodriguez had the chance to be Grayson Rodriguez. I think that the biggest success story for them, same with Jackson Holiday. I think the biggest success story for them is probably Gunner. Yeah. So Gunner is probably the best of all of them. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Let's go to question number five. I like this one. This comes to us from Rye.McKinney on Instagram. On the heels of the Dylan Cease and Framber Valdez pitching masterclass, what have been some of your favorite pitching performances this year that you've watched? Now, this is a good one. I have one that I, like, as soon as this question was asked, I remembered it because it wasn't that long ago. It was about a month ago. I'll just get straight into it. So, on August 12th, Chris Sale took on Blake Snell. Atlanta Braves versus the San Francisco Giants. Chris Sale was just masterful. Seven innings, four hits, no earn, no walks, 12 Ks. But Blake Snell on the other side, 10 days off of throwing a no-hitter, goes six and a third, has a no-hitter going into the seventh. Two hits, no earned. Of course, you're going to get three walks with Snell, but 11 Ks. They became the fourth pair of pitchers. I looked this up afterwards. Fourth pair of pitchers to each have more than 10 strikeouts and allow three or fewer hits in the same game ever. So that one for me. And I remember watching it being like, oh right. my God. It ended 1 0 in 10 innings. And I'm just sitting, the game went so fast. The no lineup had a shot. Nobody. It was both guys at the top of their game dicing. It was, it was Snell in that vintage, like, he's the best ever. Yeah. In the midst of a sale Cy Young, that was, I remember that. It was so sick. It was awesome. Can I, I tell you, that was the only game that came to the forefront of my mind. Really? The other ones, I was like, I don't know. But then yeah. sale Snell, I thought about it. Because we spent like 20 minutes on that game on the pot. Yeah. There are guys where I'm like, this was a Scooble masterclass. This was a schemes yeah. masterclass. But getting sale Snell, that's the one. 
Like yeah. that is the game of the year. Here's one that I really remember. It was the cut came second in my mind. It's not the best, right? I'm sure you can find better yeah. um, pitching duels. Yeah. But this one, it was on opening day. It was between the Tigers and the White Sox. Scoovel throws six shutty. Yeah. Dominates the White Sox. And like at the time on opening day, we didn't know the White Sox were going to be the worst team ever. No, and and we learned something about the starter for the White Sox. You're right. And they were healthy. And then we learned about Garrett Crochet against those Tigers where he went six innings. Uh, the final line for Crochet, one earned run in six innings, had a bunch of Ks, though. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, so he is a starter? And yeah. then on the other side, oh, so he is as good as I thought. And that one just got me really excited. I remember I bet Tiger's Moneyline minus 170 because I'm like, and that I never do that, but I'm like, right. it's Scooble. I bet on him to win the Cy Young. They're right. not this guy's losing. Made his first start as a professional baseball player. And I'm, and yeah, he's a first start. Like, no way he's any good. Oh, he was good. And I had to sweat that. So that's one that I, re I do remember as well. That's a really good shout. Yeah. yeah. Is there any other ones that came to the top of your mind? I don't think so. I like, honestly, I was just... trying to rack my brain and I was just like, sail Snell. Because I wanted to keep it like, the question was, do you remember watching? Like, yeah. there have been some where like I came in in the fifth inning because I saw how good it was. Right. Or I had it on a TV. I'm like, oh, I watched Snell sail. And I watched every inning of Crochet, Scooble. And those came to the forefront i will say fromber's no hit bid against the rangers when seager took him yard in the ninth like that yeah. was one of those games that i remember too but frankly like i don't i probably couldn't tell you who pitched for the rangers that day yeah i don't i didn't remember either so i wanted to i didn't want to look up anything i was just like what do i definitely remember so those yeah. so let us know in the youtube comments did we forget any right what's your favorite that you remembered and in the meantime let's take a quick break all right, we got four questions left here on the mailbag, and they're all bangers. We'll start at number six, uh, and this question comes to us from y.set.ryan on IG. What an electric username. All right, let's get into it. Which rookie is going to have an Evan Carter-esque postseason run? Also, shout out eBay seller for gifting his mom cards. Oh, nice. Yeah, you heard about that story, right? No. So I, I don't know the full crux. I remember it like coming across the timeline and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure it had to center around like Evan Carter's mom or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, um, Evan Carter's mom was bidding on Evan Carter cards. Yes. And saw that. So the seller DM was like, I'm not going to let you pay for these. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. I'm trying to collect all the cool cards of Evan. Yes. Yeah, that's electric. That is, yeah. that is really awesome. Um, so. Any monkey with a computer can come out and say, I think Jackson Merrill is going to have an amazing postseason run. No shit. He's been the best rookie offensively. He's a freaking juggernaut. The Padres are definitely going to make it. I totally agree. Now, a less obvious but still very obvious answer is Jackson Chorio of the Milwaukee Brewers. He's got a 147 WRC+. plus. He's a budding superstar. You guys talked about him yesterday. We've talked about him countless times he is fantastic, and he's still so young. Those are the first two that, like, instantly come to people's minds. So I challenge you, Jack. Do you have another player who you think could go on kind of a sneaky run? Because I know I do for an American League team. Kyle Manzardo, Cleveland. Mm, I like that one. I wrote it down at the end, but he wasn't the first one, but I like that. Kyle Manzardo is my answer. Um, Manzardo is going to be a huge piece of the power conversation if the Guardians are going to homer their way deep into the postseason. I could see a couple big homers coming off Manzardo's bat as they climb deeper and deeper into the postseason. Love that one. A guy who I've become obsessed with, you probably heard me talk about him on the weekend roundup. Yeah. Parker Meadows. Yeah, I think could have a really, really good run. I had Meadows written down, by the way. Let me just say that. 128 WRC plus in September. I also think that the glove, he's so smooth out there. He runs like a gazelle in center field. He's such a good defender. He's got a ton of speed. He's got a great arm. And he's just got such a good approach at the plate. Barrels, baseballs, like he's a guy. Tigers are a half game out. And a big reason why they're here is because of Parker Meadows' production, not only defensively in center field, but at the plate. Big body, 6'5". 
I think he's going to be great. I'm really excited about him. So I had Manzardo written down. I had Parker Meadows written down as well. Um, anybody else come to the top of mind? I'll give you a pitching one just because he's been on fire this month and the Tigers are in this conversation yeah. because of pitching. Like they have the best staff ERA since this winning streak started on August 11th. That's yeah. what I mentioned earlier this week. You know who's been unreal in September as a long man? Brant Herter. Yeah. Just watch out. Yeah. It's not sexy by any stretch, but Brant Herter, like, fought kind of came out of nowhere last year. The pitching version of Evan Carter last year was Brandon Fott. If the Tigers are going to make this weird Cinderella run like Arizona did, Herter is not the prospect that Fott was. Fott was a top 50 prospect in baseball. But, dude, like, Herter is throwing like a man possessed right now. Two more that I wrote down. Love that one, by the way. Love it. Two that I also written down on the on the offense side. Um, the only reason is I don't truly believe in these, but I want to put it out in the ether because if I do, that maybe some vibrations from this channel can somehow get some better bat on ball. You know, we can clip it and put it out. And it's like, see, I told you so. I told you so. so now I'm going to name it every remember. rookie in the postseason. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm only going to do two more. I promise. Adrian Del Castillo on the downbacks. I just don't know if he's going to get enough playing time, but I fucking love him. Dude, hits the shit out of the ball. And on yeah. the AL side, I mean, Jason Dominguez could go crazy. He could. Could go crazy. Luis Heal could go crazy. Heal could go nuts. But yeah. I think everybody's already bought into Heal. And, like, Dominguez is a top 10 prospect in baseball. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, like, it's kind of a – but Evan Carter was a top 10 prospect in baseball. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're not yeah. excluding guys because they're already really good and right. Oh, you're too good. Yeah. Big dive prospects. I understand with Merrill and Churio, it's just so obvious. So yes, but um, who knows? Also, Austin Wells. <laughs> but no, we'll continue. I mean, sure. I'm not wrong. All right, let's keep going to question number seven. What potential matchup are you most excited for in the playoffs? And then in parentheses, this person wrote. And why is it Framber versus Tarek School when the Tigers get in? Probably a Tigers fan. And I understand it. It's a great one. Uh, that comes to us from Rye.McKinney on Instagram. Uh, I I didn't really have matchups. I know we added Framber versus Tarek Skubal. I separated them into series that I am very, very excited to watch. That's how I kind of thought about the question. Do you think about more like ace versus ace? I did. Okay. Um, so I had Scooble Framber and some assortment of these three. Scooble, Framber, Garrett Cole in the American League. Like I want to see some assortment where it's like Framber Cole or Scooble Cole, that kind of thing. The other one was some assortment of these three of the National League. Sale, Wheeler, Cease. Like if we got Wheeler Sale, wow. If we got Wheeler Cease, wow. If we got Cease Sale, awesome. See, I went with series, um, yeah. but I can kind of relate it. So the Brewers are likely going to face either the Mets or the Braves in the first round. Oh, I can't wait for that. Brewers, Braves? Brewers, Braves, or Brewers, Mets. I just cannot wait to watch the Brewers because they've been the team that has shocked everybody. They just clinched the division. Nobody's going to be picking them. And they're going to be up going up against big media teams. The New York Mets, their incredible run in the second half of the season, how they started 22 and 33 and have made it all the way here. And it's been amazing. And they have all these pitching. I want to see how the Brewers respond to that. And then sale. Let's say it's the Braves who make it in. I think it's going to be the Mets. I'm really not sure. But let's say it's the Braves. Sale then versus Freddie in Milwaukee. Everyone's going to pick Braves. And I want to see if the Brewers could respond there. So I that's at the top of my list. I cannot wait to watch the Brewers in the playoffs. I think the wild card series between the Padres and the D backs is gonna feel like an NLCS. Oh yeah. I that's I mean, these I again I've been glazing the National League West this entire year because I think it's been the best baseball of the year so far. And to see those two teams, two teams who I think could legitimately beat any other team in the National League going up against each other in a shorter series and the rivals. That's awesome. Yeah. My last one, sneaky one, Orioles Royals. <laughs> Orioles Royals. I want to see the team, the young team, 
that got bounced last year and was too young go up against this year's too young. And I'm putting them all in quotes because history doesn't always repeat itself. Maybe the Royal, maybe the Orioles were just never good enough. And it's now the Royals who are quote unquote young taking them down. Or maybe it's finally the year where the Orioles stomp on some throats and get revenge on the playoffs. Like I have, it's going to be box office either way. It's going to be Gunner versus Bobby. It's going to be Reagan's versus Burns. Oh, give me that. Give me all that. I didn't include my Yankees. Yankees are number one because I can't wait to watch them. But those are the series where I'm keying in on for sure. Fair. All right. Should we move on to question number eight? Let's do it. We're kind of moving through this pretty good. Good for us. I think we're doing well. Yeah. Doing pretty well. All right. Um, Question number eight. This comes to us from Sam underscore 65 underscore W on Instagram. Rank the managers of contending teams in order of who you'd want at the helm for a playoff run. So Jack and I were texting about this question because I just needed a little bit more time before we press the record button to rank my managers because it's right. so hard. It's so hard because at the end of the day, like we Do can we pretend we can right. pretend like we have a great idea. Everybody listening can pretend that their manager is so much better than everybody else's. You don't know listening. You know. I don't know talking. I don't think Jack knows really. We can give it our best shot and we can pitch it but this is how i felt this is my list okay fair all right um i will tell you i did five and okay. you did 13 <laughs> i did do 13 no <laughs> i did wreck all of them no actually there are 14 teams technically i have a top okay one. you did 14 so i i'm gonna give you my five i want minimal reaction from you and then i want your 14 and i'll like critique it a little bit okay my five that i id'd here um right now just based on vibes pat murphy Pat Murphy and Stephen Vote are right there. Pat Murphy in Milwaukee, Stephen Vote in Cleveland. I'll save my rebuttals for after. Okay. Um, Rob Thompson in Philly yep. is very, very high up there. Uh, Snit, right? Like Brian Snitker has to be there. And then I was torn between Mike Schilt and Tori Lavello. Mike Schilt in San Diego, Tori Lavello in Arizona. Tori Lavello is a year removed from making this run. So I lean Tori Lovello, but I love Mike Shield. Yeah. We have completely different lists. Like, okay. so different. It couldn't be, like, you, my number one, you haven't even named. Aaron Boone one. No, not Aaron Boone one. Brandon AJ, AJ Hinch. Hinch is a good answer. First of all, if we're combining World Series pedigree, he's a World Series champion with the Astros in 2017. Did they cheat? Yeah. I don't know. No, they didn't. Right, Jack? They did not. No, they did. We know that. They were <laughs> okay, disciplined. Whatever. They did. <laughs> whenever I make jokes about it, you would all get pissed. And I'm like, it's a joke. I don't. Uh... It was seven years ago. Still funny. Still funny. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so regardless, World Series champion. And then with the Tigers, right? If we're combining expectations for these teams outdoing those expectations yeah. with World Series pedigree. So my list is a lot of guys who have been there and done that. There's some World Series champions. Got to respect those guys. They've actually been on the mantle. We can say, well, this guy's regular season team has been so consistent for so long, but he just hasn't gotten over the hump. That's why Rob Thompson is not that. I mean, he's still pretty high. So let me run you through. AJ Hinch, number one. Debate a wall. Tigers Nation stand up. <laughs> Debate a wall. <laughs> Uh, number two, Brian Snicker. Yeah. 2021 champion. Braves are still really good. They, their entire lineup has been injured all year. I'll ride with Snit till the day I die. Yeah. Number three, Dave Roberts. Now, I know Dodger fans hate him. Okay. But he won the World Series in 2020. He went there in 2018. His teams are perpetually amazing. I still would want Dave Roberts in my dugout. Number four, Tori Lovello. Tori Lovello was a freaking dog. Now, do I know that to be a fact? No, but it's my vibe. It's my <laughs> vibe from Tori Lovello. Got it. Freaking brought the Diamondbacks to the World Series last year and is great again. Yeah, is or did Cattell Marte. <laughs> like, you know, whatever. Maybe he was like, hey, Cattell Marte, hit the ball better. And he got did. It, that could it. be yeah. something. We don't mm -hmm. know. But off vibes, I'm going with Lovello. Okay. Number five, Rob Thompson with Philly. Grit guy. Do I Grit know that guy. to be a fact? Absolutely not. But am I ranking? No, I know that I to be a fact. Grit guy, Rob Thompson. Okay. So here's where Pat Murphy and Steven Vogt come in six and seven. And I did rank Pat Murphy just a little bit above because I think what the Brewers have done 
I mean, they were plus 800 to win the division. Shout out all the not gambling advice and jars. We just hit that. Cleveland Guardians with Stephen Vogt were plus 400. We're going to hit that soon. Not gambling advice and jars. Expectations. I think Pat Murphy, what he's done with Milwaukee, especially losing Yelich. Now I know Guardians have lost Bieber and McKenzie. I get it. I think Yelich is a bigger loss. Eh, I don't know. But regardless, I think the Brewers have been a little bit more impressive with Pat Murphy. So I put Pat six, Stephen Vogt seven. Now here's where we get into Aaron Boone. I do think Aaron Boone should be number eight. His teams are usually very, very good. Yeah. He's been to the ALCS. That's my only real pitch for him. Uh, Mike Schilt comes in next. I think we both want to rank Schilt high just because we like his vibe. Like I love his vibe. I mean, Schilt hasn't really proven anything, but, like but that, I just like it. Can I tell you just straight up, that is how I analyze managers. Vibe. How else are you? You can't. It's like, oh, well, this this guy like gets ejected a certain amount, and this guy turns to a pinch hitter in this case. Like, no, like maybe we could. Maybe somebody smarter than us could, but we're not like I, I can't ingest that about managers. I just can't because I, I know a lot only, of the lineups come from the front office anyway. The only coach, like the only sport where you can be like, this coach really, really matters is football. Like that's the yeah. only one. Yeah, hundred percent. Um Number 10, Matt Quicharo with the Royals. Uh-huh. I think he's done such a good job. Yeah. But first year, just unproven so far. But in terms of expectations, what he's done with Kansas City this year, he deserves to be up ahead of a couple of guys, including number 11, Brandon Hyde. I think Brandon Hyde's a good manager, but I also don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. And you ask an Orioles fan, like, there's – there's comments under our mailbag saying, is it time to fire Brandon Hyde? No, it's not. And I'm like, okay, like, no. Nah, but at the yeah. same time, this has been a pretty disappointing year, and he's got a ton of talent. Now, I know injuries, of course, but if we're looking at expectations, they were the division favorite here. It's hard to do it with two arms and a leg tied behind your back in the starting rotation. Fair. But they just and, DFA'd Craig Kimbrell. And I think it's sick that they got anything out of Cole Irvin. I don't even know if that's Brandon Hyde's thing. Though. We don't know. <laughs> that's not Brandon Hyde's thing. I don't think so either. Uh, number 12, Carlos Mendoza with the Mets. Uh-huh. I think he's good. First year. Yeah. No idea. Joe Espada with the Astros. First I mean, year. the fact that they're not winning 100 games this year, like, you're going to get docked down. You're right. <laughs> the fact that he gave up on Martin Maldonado bumps him all the way back up. Right. But I don't even know if he gave up on yeah, Maldonado. Leonard Diaz is finally catching <laughs> Um, a number fourteen debate a wall. Rocco Baldelli. Yeah, you you're something against Rocco. I don't. I don't think my opinion on him matters. I don't. That think makes Twins are going to the postseason. I've I said that. So I said that like a month ago. And more talented than a lot of the teams. Yeah, maybe. It's tough because the injuries, like guys, have just been cycling through that roster is so inconsistent. Um. Yeah, Hinch might have just been a blunder on me because Hinch is absolutely top flight. Because, if yeah, I was trying to combine outdoing expectations with already a World Series champion. Like, that's Hinch. Yeah. So, is he the best manager? I don't know. But mm. my model, my vibe model, has yeah. him number one. Peter what, are you going to argue with, you gonna argue with numbers? One. Yeah. yeah. You're going to argue with my brain making connections in there? No. I of course can't. Not. I don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> All right. Uh, question number nine, and to end the mailbag, give a piece of advice to each team at the bottom of their division. From Dodger Fan Dolan, or Dodger Fan Dolan? No, Dodger, Dodger Fan, Fan Dolan, Dolan, 99. Like James Dolan, the owner of the New York Knicks, uh, but he's a Dodger fan. It's funny that there's a Dodger fan asking this about the last place teams. I respect that. I actually got into a Twitter debate. Um, a couple of weeks ago about the sale Scoobal situation. Some guy was going to war for Tarek Scoobal over sale. And I was like, well, he leads in this, 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 this. And I was like, Oh, are you a Tigers fan? He's like, no, I'm a Dodger fan. I, I was like, that. what? You're going to war right now. I mean, we I had like that. multiple exchanges, whatever, but shout out Dodger fans. They're going to war for other guys. Um, Rockies. Sign free agent bats, draft pitching. Yeah. Um, I said embrace the weird. Look for more of these weird arms like it's working. Carson Palmquist exists in your farm system. Sean Sullivan exists in your farm system. 
um, play the DFA game. Cal Quantrill worked out really well this year. So like, it's just things like that. I'd say. Yeah. And I, I just said that because there's no pitcher on earth. Who's going to willingly go sign with no, you. No, there are you bats, have though. to have them for the six years, but bats will. Yeah. Bats will. So focus on that. Make that your priority. Like we're going to draft pitchers. So they're forced to come here. And then we're also going to draft bats and entice them with look at what your numbers will look like in Colorado and pretend that you didn't ever hear of Chris Bryant. Just pretend. Right. right. He's kind of the Anthony Rendon of the National League. No, so we had this conversation, worst contracts in sports, and I think – or worst contract in baseball. Uh, Bryant is number one. Rendon, Rendon is number two. I think Rendon is a worse contract. Yeah, Rendon's, Rendon's probably – Rendon's, like, more expensive, too. Yeah, and Rendon hates ball. Like, Brian yeah. is an awesome guy that loves ball. He's just – he can't stay on the field. So, yeah, Rendon one, Bryant two, Baez three, Andrew Benintendi four. Like, do we give Baez credit for being on the field and being horrific? I think so. Over yeah. not being on the field and being yeah. horrific? Yeah, I guess so. Shout out Baez for playing. Shout out Baez for playing. And then shout out Andrew Benintendi for playing. Unfortunately, it just doesn't look great. Yeah, second half. Better than Volpe. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> uh, Blue Jays. Clean house in the front office and the manager role. Get everybody out. Nice. I said get younger. Um, like, they're getting younger hey, right now. What? I said they're getting younger right now. Like the lineup is so much more fun to watch than these old bags. At the they, they are, but like keep getting younger. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there are some guys where it's like, why are you still on the team? I agree with you. Uh, White Sox. I wrote down good luck. <laughs> I wrote down do everything different. There was an Change. article. Yeah, there was an article on The Athletic. Did you read it? Uh, Ken, well, which Ken article? Rosenthal. You just said there's an article on The Athletic. Did you read it? Yeah, no. But like when I bring up the White Sox, you should know this article. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that know this article. I've not read uh, it. Ken Rosenthal and Britt Giroli co-wrote an article essentially talking about the shortcomings of the organization and how it is all tracked back to ownership. Mm-hmm. And it is a fascinating read. Fascinating. There are some Brian, details. Reinsdorf just skating on Jordan. There are some details there. All right. You'll leave it at that. So definitely go check out that article. Uh, Angels sell the team. Uh, I wrote do everything different. <laughs> so- <laughs> I mean, if Artie Moreno, is at the top of this organization. There will never be a time where I buy in. The Angels were a team on this show when we started Project the Plate back in 2021. I think I might buy the Angels this year. I think I'm I'm done. I'm done until he's gone. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know, Angels fans have not liked our rhetoric lately. And I don't know why. Maybe they're brainwashed. Angel fans have not liked it? Yeah. Got How do Angels comments. fans feel like some- the Angels? I know we've gotten some Instagram comments. I remember the Reed Detmers video where we said it was insane to send him down. A lot of people disagreed with that take in Angels Nation. It's like, okay. There's something about LA, man. Like I, I mentioned Dave Roberts deserves a, a, like a medal for dealing with all the injuries this year. And they're like, hey, the amount of hate yeah. for that. It's like, what, Jack, your Dodger bias, your Dodger simping is showing. I'm just like, what? Where is this coming from? But. I, I I agreed with – well, I read the quote card. I was like, I agree with what he's saying. That's going to get destroyed. Yeah. Because when Seriously. you give a manager of a team who spent a trillion dollars praise, in a lot of fans' minds, for whatever reason, based on that comment section, is you're disrespecting our manager. And Bobby like, Miller has an eight and a half. Everyone's bringing up, like, the problems that they had on their team. It's like you're not discrediting them. You're just applauding Dave Roberts in this situation in this – context in this segment he's kept a level head when like he's running out knack and then robleski knack looks awesome by the way absolutely a rookie possible breakout in the postseason arm and i were just talking about him uh before recording the call up but like he ran out knack he ran out robleski starting games like dude the the bottom you know half of that lineup stunk for the majority of the year it's crazy like it's okay to give him a little bit of credit i agree uh marlins Stay young, I wrote. And this is actual advice. Like for a lot of these, like Blue Jays, genuine advice. Rockies, genuine. White Sox, I didn't care. Angels, I'm just going to keep saying sell the team. I don't want the Marlins to do a Gene Segura-esque offseason. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, we got these young guys coming back. We're, you know, these are our core. And then we're going to fill in the gaps with 
shit veterans who will sign for a year instead of just continuing to play these young guys. See who you have, because let's not pretend that next year is some bounce back just because you made the playoffs the prior year. I don't think it's going to be. Now, could it be? Who knows? Then you add at the deadline to fill those holes. Don't go into the year with these two-year, $15 million contracts for guys who are obviously past their prime but want an opportunity to play. Stick with the young guys. So that would be my genuine advice for the Marlins. So mine was blueprint your lineup, and I I think it follows a similar tone to what you're saying. And what I mean by that is go into this offseason – I think Peter Bendix and whoever they hire to be the new manager should sit down and say, hey, next year, Connor Norby is playing second base or Connor Norby is playing left field. Hey, Augustine Ramirez is the opening day catcher. Like, I want to know what it looks like. We need a free agent in right field. We need a free agent. Like, no, but maybe it's fucking Griffin Konak in right field. Like right it is. Xavier Edwards at shortstop. Let's just figure out what it's going to look like. Hey, yeah. we need a free agent to play third base because we're moving Berger to first. Yes. The pitching is so exciting. Yeah. Sandy being ahead of schedule, Yuri being ahead of schedule. I just want to see an offensive plan in place yeah. this offseason. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Pirates, I'll hand it over to you. I mean, I have some advice, but I'm sure that you likely have better advice. Take a shot with a bat. Um, My thing was like actually personnel thing. Move Brian Reynolds to first base and sign Tyler O'Neill. Or just sign Tyler O'Neill and hope he can stay healthy all year because you're going to need Brian Reynolds likely in the outfield still. Brian Reynolds is not a good outfield defender at all. Yeah, I know. But you've had first base problems. you're not bringing Rowdy back. I I mean, shit, dude. Tyler O'Neill is having a hell of a year for the Red Sox. That Definitely. has been, I think, underappreciated at this point. It's not like he's going to cost a zillion dollars. You might have to pay him a little bit. You might have to pay him like, hey, if you want a two-year $50 million deal for Tyler O'Neill, I think he's earned that at this point. So if you're moving Brian Reynolds out of the outfield, who's the Pirates outfield in 2025 that you're thinking about? O'Neill Cruz in center. Yeah. Tyler O'Neill in left. Yeah. And then you figure it out and right. Is it Billy Cook? Is it, I mean, shit, Brian De La Cruz is still on this team. That's what I was saying. I think you sign Tyler O'Neill and then you have an outfield of O'Neill Cruz, Tyler O'Neill, and Brian Reynolds, and you say, fuck outfield defense. (laughs) I don't, I don't love that. Like, I I don't know. We could talk about moves, but I think you're, we both have the same takeaways. I said, are you rebuilding or are you not? Essentially, what we're saying is you, you're staring, Skeens, Jones, Keller, Chandler, Harrington in the face right now. What are you going to do with that? I agree. Like, there's windows here. Yeah. There could be a great pitching window next year. Get a few bats. You don't have to go spend $200 million. Get three $50 million players. And then and you're going to get Andy Rodriguez back next year, which I'm mm-hmm. very excited to see. Just homered yesterday. Brian Hayes can't be as bad, right? <laughs> I mean... Not great. We'll see, though. We'll talk about the Pirates more in the offseason, but hopefully everybody enjoyed the last mailbag of the regular season. Greatly appreciate everybody contributing all season long. Potentially we'll have one in the playoffs. We're normally recapping games, constantly breaking down every matchup, so we might not. So you'll either see one in the playoffs or during the offseason. Of course, we'll, we'll still be loading up episodes three days a week instead of five appreciate everybody listening and if you did enjoy the show five-star review is the best way to support whether it be on spotify or on apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and hitting that big red subscribe button on youtube and hitting the like button and comment down below right it helps the algorithm we read all the comments try and respond to all of them so really appreciate that and go get yourself some just baseball merch you know i'm rocking just baseball merch jack you rocking just baseball merch no don't be like Jack. Use code JB15 and sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is in our episode description and the promo code JB15 to get 15% off merch. Go check it out. Game time, code just baseball. Bet MGM, code just baseball. For Jack and Willen, I'm Peter Apple. We will see you on Monday for the weekend roundup. And with that, thank you, everybody. <laughs>